Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson is presented by Actistat, Adina Springs, Bloodstock Research, Breeders' Cup, Claiborne Farm, EmpireCityBets.com, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, Quillen Leather and Tack, Shadwell Farm, Spendthrift Farm, Three Chimneys Farm, and Windstar Farm. Hi everyone, I'm Kate and Brader, filling in for John Henderson on this edition of Thoroughbred Week, featuring the latest winner of the Grade 1 Delmar Futurity for Hall of Fame trainer Bob Baffert and a runaway winner of the Grade 2 Super Derby from Louisiana Downs. We begin with the Los Alamito smile, masochistic, the even money favorite. Frank Miramati picks up the call. Approaching the top of the stretch, Masochistic is the leader, three quarters of a length, Soy Fett, Rock Me Baby, Sky Kingdom, Blue Colors far outside, Clubhouse Ride is at the rail, they're heading toward the furlong pole, Soy Fett coming gamely after Masochistic, Soy Fett on the outside is up to take the lead, Masochistic shortening stride, then Clubhouse Ride in a line for, battling for third, now taken by Tonito M, but it's Soy Fett in a stellar performance. He is making short work of them in the Los Alamitos mile. Soy Fett and Kent DeSormo by seven widening lengths. Make the official margin seven and a quarter as Soy Fett draws off to defeat the heavy favorite Masochistic. Kent DeSormo up in track record time of 133 and four, a 104 brisk speed rating. Soy Fett is two for two at Los Alamitos, having won the Bertrando Stakes in July. The Leonard Powell trainee tried graded stakes company in his last start and finished seventh in the grade three San Diego handicap. The winner is a six-year-old California bred gelding by Tizbud. Soy Fett has earned $472,000 for Gerald and Sandra Benowitz, Matilda Powell, and Paul Viskovich. American Produce Records is now available online. Visit brisnet.com APR for unlimited access to the pedigrees of more than 3 million thoroughbreds for just $275 a year, now including sire stats. Next, the Presque Isle Mile. Joha, the three to one favorite. Ron Mullis has the call. Decisive moment, still trying to go gate to wire here. Machiavelli tracking in second. Horsted Canes moving well to the outside. And Horsted Canes, decisive moment. These two doing battle. The far outside, Alley's event. Joe Ha also involved. They straighten out for the drive home. Decisive moment, still holding tough. Alley's event in between. Joe Ha to the outside. Horsted Canes, I'll call with the late run. Now it's Alley's event. Decisive moment, decisive moment. Alley's event to the wire decisive moment allowed to set a leisurely pace 10 to 1 decisive moment is able to hold off 23 to 1 alley's event by a head Willie Martinez with the pickup mount the Florida bread clocked in 137 and 3 decisive moment had been winless in his last 18 races since taking the 2011 Delta mile but the one Arias trainee had been runner-up in his last two starts in stakes company at Calder and Gulfstream Park Decisive Moment has earned $908,000. The six-year-old gelding by with approval was bred in Florida by his owner just for fun stables. Florida breads, race them or chase them. To Churchill Downs for the grade three Ack Ack handicap. Raidster the six to five favorite. Larry Kulmus picks up the call. Right to vote is going at it. Going at it with Braidster with three furlongs to run. They are stride for stride and Carve is coming up to them. Flashback is being ridden to go. Flashback's got to pick it up. He's lost ground four lengths off the lead. Politically correct is last of them all, and they're coming to the top of the stretch. And Braidster turns for home in front. Braidster kicks away from Carve. Right to vote gives way on the inside. Flashback and politically correct. A furlong to run. And Braidster and Carve will decide it. Braidster's trying to hold off Carve. Braidster, Carve still coming on the outside. Braidster digs in and Braidster's got enough left. Braidster has won the ack, -Ack over Carve. Braidster the winner by a length and three quarters over Carve. Corey Lannery aboard the Keeneland sales graduate in 134 and 2. Winner of the grade three mineshaft handicap earlier this year, the Eddie Keneally trainee favored for the ack, -Ack off a pair of runner-up finishes in graded stakes at Monmouth Park. The four-year-old colt by Lionheart was bred in Kentucky by Doug Branham and was a $13,000 Keeneland November weanling. A $195,000 two-year-old, Braidster has earned $455,000 for Joseph Sutton. 
Braidster paid $4.40 to win and is the Malone's Favorite of the Week, presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. Back to Presque Isle Downs for the Grade 2 Masters Stakes. European import living the life, the 5-2 favorite. Once again, here's Ron Mullis. To the far turn they go, and significant bling shows away after a quarter in 23 and 2. Ageless up to the outside, second. Disco Barbie sneaking right up the rail is next. Cactus Chris just to her outside. Then it's living the life as they make their way around the turn. Significant bling still showing the way over ageless disco Barbie down along the rail. Northern Passion swings wide. Master of the Blues, Cactus Chris at the top of the stretch. Significant bling trying to go gate to wire here. Ageless alongside living the life. Disco Barbie nowhere to go. Seven across the track. Living the life. Ageless with a run. Living the life. Now gets through there. Now here comes Disco Barbie. Living the life. Ageless. Disco Barbie with the late run. Living the life wins it. Living the life takes it by half a length over Disco Barbie. Mike Smith, the winning jockey, in 115 and 1. The synthetic track specialist is working on a three race winning streak, including an optional claimer at Del Mar in her U.S. debut for trainer Gary Mandela. The Irish bred four year old filly by footsteps in the sand had been racing over the all weather track at Lynchfield, England. Living the Life has earned $479,000 for HNR Nothaft Horse Racing LLC. There's more racing coming up, but first, here's the upcoming schedule in the Breeders' Cup Win and You're In Challenge Series. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with the Grade 2 Pocahontas Stakes coming up in this segment. But we begin with three-year-old stakes action presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. To Kentucky Downs for the Dueling Grounds Derby. Medal count the 7-5 favorite. John Lees has the call. They've got about five furlongs to go now on the Dueling Grounds Derby. And Maya Fleet lets out just a notch. Is doing it well within himself, but is now a length and a half in front. Laddie Boy is second. Woodfield Springs third. And right there poised are both Metal Count and Global View. They're side by side. They both have horse. They're three lengths off the lead. It's a gap of three back to Captain Dixie. Now passing rank as privileges. And can't help believing gets involved. It begins to come uncoiled. He's closing gradually now, making his move towards the outside as they come for the top of the stretch now in this marathon derby. And here's Metal Count emerging strongly. He's won from the inside of the orange. And Global View is now produced. He's coming on in the gold cap. And from dead last is Can't Help Believing. They come for the final quarter. And still there is Maya Fleet. It is Metal Count. Maya Fleet, then Global View and Can't Help Believing. For the final furlong now, Maya Fleet is tough as nails. He runs with Metal Count. Then Global View back in third. It's Metal Count up to the lead though. It's Metal Count and Maya Fleet. Maya Fleet stays right with him. It's these two and Maya Fleet and Meadow Count in a dramatic photo finish there in the Dueling Grounds Derby. Let's take another look at that photo finish. It's the heavy favorite Metal Count putting his nose in front at the rail under Robbie Elberado, but pace setter Maya Fleet and Leandro Goncalves are fighting back on the outside. An 8 to 1 Maya Fleet gets up to take the photo by a nose. The second stakes victory on the card for Goncalves. The mile and 5 sixteenths over the undulating course in 214 flat. A maiden winner in his first start on turf at Keeneland in April. Maya Fleet making his stakes debut after winning an entry level allowance turf marathon at Saratoga. The gelding by a fleet Alex was bred in Kentucky by Jeffrey Amling and Charles Noel. Trained by James Lawrence, Maya Fleet has earned $269,000 for Amling and Merrifield Farm. Gio Ponti, sire the highest priced yearling at $500,000 at Saratoga this year. Look for his first crop yearlings at upcoming sales. To Arlington Park for two-year-old fillies in the Arlington, Washington Lassie Stakes. Sarah Sis, the even money favorite. John G. Dooley has the call. They come toward the quarter pole. Sarah Sis, Quality Rocks, Puntsville on the outside. Then cutting the corner toward the inside as they strain away for home now. Lemon Gallo, the half mile 47 at one for seconds. Fan wide was happy to go. They're in the final furlong. And here's Quality Rocks now putting her best foot forward in the Arlington Washington Lassie. Saracis is second, then happy to go into third from Puntsville. It's Quality Rocks and Rosemary Homeister Jr. Quality Rocks pulled away to win by three and a half. 
Four to one second choice quality rocks outfinishes Sarah Sis by three and a half lengths. Rosemary Homeister Jr. aboard the Florida bred in 124 in four. Quality rocks now two for two after breaking her maiden on debut at Presque Isle Downs. Bill Helmbach trains the winner. Quality rocks has earned $76,000. The winner was bred in Florida by her owner, Destiny Oaks of Ocala. Florida breds race them or chase them. To Churchill Downs for the grade two Pocahontas stakes, take Charge Brandy, the three to two favorite. Larry Colmas has the call. It is Christina's journey, still the leader. It's a half length advantage at the half mile pole on True to You and Take Charge Brandy is right there while going three wide into the turn. Now these three kick on from Frolic to the Wire, who's under a ride. Rachel's Ready is next. Mile High Butterfly is in the midst of her run. She's got six lengths to make up and goes with Pangburn. Loom is getting loose on the far outside and starting to pick off horses as they come toward the top of the stretch. Christina's journey off the turn in front. Take Charge Brandy, Mile High Butterfly on the outside and Loom behind them. Into the final furlong, it is Christina's journey in front. Mile High Butterfly, Take Charge Brandy is next. Then Loom and Pangburn is closing in too. And she's closing strongly into second, but Christina's journey has a large lead as they come down to the wire. Christina's journey has won the Pocahontas over Pangburn. 7-2 second choice Christina's Journey takes the field gate to wire to defeat Pangburn by two and a quarter lengths. Miguel Mena aboard the Keeneland Sales graduate in 146 and 1. The Dale Romans trainee coming off an impressive first out maiden victory at Ellis Park. The filly by any given Saturday was bred in Kentucky by Phil Needham, Judy Needham, and Benna Halecki. Christina's Journey has earned $153,000 for GSN Racing LLC. The filly was consigned by Lantern Hill Farm agent to the 2013 Keeneland September yearling sale, where she was purchased by Dale Romans, agent for Frank Jones, for $37,000. Grade 2 Pocahontas Stakes winner Christina's Journey, the Keeneland sales graduate of the week. The Spendthrift Farm Stallion of the week is top sire Malibu Moon, AP Indy's leading son five years straight. Currently available for breeding on Southern Hemisphere time at a discounted stud fee. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week. With the Grade 1 Delmar Futurity coming up in this segment, we get underway with the Grade 3 Arlington Washington Futurity. Recount the 9 to 5 favorite. Once again, here's John G. Dooley. They enter the turn. It's recount. Private Prospect is right at recount side. Three furlongs from the winning line. Ike Walker, one go, all go. That Fairbanks Colt still right there handy for Tim Thornton. Seraph takes the overland route as they close ranks at the quarter pole. Bourbon Cowboy only has three lengths to raise. Then comes Mr. Lightning Boy as they come past the quarter pole into the stretch. The half mile in 46 and three fifth seconds. Three sixteenths to go. Private Prospect's nosed in front to reach count on the outside here comes one go all go and toward the rail bourbon cowboy they come inside the final 16th recount digs down deep private prospect battles to a photo one go all go a thrilling futurity finish private prospect and recount it's a nose between those two recount holds off private prospect by a head with one go all go another head back in the show spot the first graded stakes victory for Emmanuel Esquivel. Time of the race, 124 and one. A first out maiden winner over the track, Recount was coming off a third place finish in the Prairie Meadows Juvenile Mile. The Illinois bred gelding by Limehouse was a $40,000 yearling. Trained by James DeVito, Recount has earned $112,000 for Double Down Stables Incorporated. Many Sons of Tis now were two turn graded stakes winners at three. But Darby Dan Stallion, American Lion, is the only one of those who is brilliant enough to be a graded stakes winning sprinter at two. Watch for American Lion's first yearlings selling at Keeneland September. To Churchill Downs for the grade three Iroquois stakes, Mr. Z, the six to five favorite. Once again, here's Larry Colmus. Mr. Z and Corey Lannery have a half mile to go and a half length lead on Lucky Player. Hashtag Bourbon waiting for running room in behind them. Cleveland Sound keeps Hashtag Bourbon pinned in for now. Then Bold Conquest on the outside. Danny Boy's got three and a half lengths to make up, and the others need to get moving. Mr. Z is the leader. Lucky Player right up alongside in second. Nowhere to go yet for Hashtag Bourbon. Cleveland Sound's in a tight spot, too, and on the outside is Bold Conquest. They're into the stretch. 
And now Lucky Player has taken the lead. Lucky Player in front. Bold Conquest. Mr. Z gives way. Where is Hashtag Bourbon going to go? He's been needing room. He's got it now to the outside of the two leaders. It's Lucky Player. Bold Conquest. Hashtag Bourbon closing on the outside. Lucky Player's got it. Lucky Player in the Iroquois. 11 to 1 Lucky Player takes it by a neck over Bold Conquest. Ricardo Santana Jr., the winning jockey in 145 and 3. A first out maiden winner at Churchill Downs and fourth in the grade three Bashford Manor Stakes, Lucky Player was coming off a third place finish in the Prairie Meadows Juvenile Mile. Steve Asmussen trains the winner for Jerry Durant. Lucky Player has earned $115,000. The Colt by Looking at Lucky, one of two stakes winning juveniles last Saturday bred by Destiny Oaks of Ocala. Florida breds, race em or chase em. Ricardo Santana Jr. with the safe ride of the week presented by Sally Horse Fans the safest way to the winner's circle. Next, the grade one Delmar Futurity. Skyway, the two to one favorite. Trevor Denman has the call. And away they go. On the far side, we have Skyway bouncing away well. Now here comes in excess time in the green and American Pharaoh. American Pharaoh now takes hold of the bit and sprints away to lead them early. Here's O. Newman pulling pretty hard along the inside. On the far side, Holiday Camps in the vanguard too. Calculators the gray, only three and a half off the leaders, being followed then by Iron Fist, Red Button on the far side. Henry's Holiday last, eight off the leader. They run past the half mile, American Pharaoh leading it by a length. Holiday Camp is right there, second. On the far side, Skyway. Calculator races between them with O. Newman down at the rail. In excess time in the green, five off the leaders. Then back to Red Button, Iron Fist, and last of all, Henry's Holiday. They come into the quarter pole now, and American Pharaoh kicks on. American Pharaoh sent along, leads it by two. Calculator comes to take him on. Skyways back in third. They head for home in the Delmar Futurity, and it's all American Pharaoh. He's strong on the lead. American Pharaoh striding away, leads by four big lengths over Calculator, who's a game second. But American Pharaoh, the son of pioneer of the Nile, has absolutely annihilated them in the Delmar Futurity. Three to one, second choice, American Pharaoh, by Windstar Farm Stallion, pioneer of the Nile. Breaks his maiden, winning by four and three quarters of over Calculator. Victor Espinosa up in 121 and two. A record 12th winner of the Del Mar Futurity for Hall of Fame trainer Bob Baffert, who took blinkers off American Pharaoh after he faded to fifth in his debut at Del Mar. The Ridgeling was bred in Kentucky by his owner, Zayat Stables, LLC. American Pharaoh has earned $181,000. Coming up, a Louisiana bred excels in his home state. Time now for the feature race of the week presented by Keeneland. Investing in racing's future since 1936 to Louisiana Downs for the 35th running of the Grade 2 Super Derby. Vickers in trouble, the 6-5 to five favorite. Here's the call by Rick Mocklin. They're off in the 35th running of the Super Derby and Vickers in trouble broke quick. Joined on the inside by I'd Be Cool and from the outside, Gold Appointment is going to hook up with that one as they head into the clubhouse turn. Jessica Starr running in fourth. Louise Flower fifth. Victory nor defeat is sixth on the outside. Then a gap of two lengths on the inside. Alamo Heights in seventh. Towards the outside, announcement is now in eighth. Between horses, East Hall is ninth. Then a gap of about six lengths on the outside. Louisiana Flyboy and Declan's Fast Cat is at the back of the pack. The opening quarter in 23 and 1. They head down the back stretch. I'd be cool has the lead by ahead. Vickers in trouble is second on the outside. Gold appointment is tracking in third. Jessica Starr has a good spot running in fourth on the inside. Louise Flower is three wide running in fifth, and victory nor defeat is sixth between horses. Then a gap of a length and a half. An announcement is next, traveling right alongside of East Hall. The half mile in 47 and 4. They go by the quarter pole, 
and they're turning for home in the 35th running of the Super Derby, and Vickers in trouble has taken the lead now by three. I'd be cool is next in second. Towards the outside, victory nor defeat. A late run on the outside by Louisiana Flyboy. A 16th of a mile to the finish. And Vickers in trouble is racing's newest millionaire as he wins the Super Derby easily by five. Vickers in trouble by Spendthrift Farm Stallion into mischief. Draws off to defeat 88 to one long shot Declan's Fast Cat, officially by seven and a quarter lengths. The second stakes winner on the card for Rosie Napravnik. Time of the race, 150 and one. Vickers in trouble won both the grade three LeCompte stakes and the grade two Louisiana Derby earlier this year at the fairgrounds. And following a last place finish in the Kentucky Derby, the Mike Maker trainee came back to run third in both the grade three Iowa Derby and the grade three West Virginia Derby. The colt was bred in Louisiana by Spendthrift Farm and was an $8,000 yearling turned $80,000 two-year-old. Vickers in Trouble has earned nearly $1,129,000 for Kenneth and Sarah Ramsey, who were honored last week as the National Owners and Breeders of the Year by the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association. A big weekend of turf racing coming up at Woodbine, including the Grade 1 Woodbine Mile, the Grade 1 Northern Dancer, and the Grade 2 Canadian. We'll have those plus the Grade 2 Summer Stakes and the Grade 2 Natalma for turf two-year-olds next week on Thoroughbred Week. Thoroughbred Week has been presented by Actistatin, Adena Springs, Bloodstock Research, Breeders' Cup, Claiborne Farm, EmpireCityBets.com, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, Quillen Leather and Tack, Shadwell Farm, Spendthrift Farm, Three Chimneys Farm, and Windstar Farm. Online at TBreadWeek.com.